Hi there, and welcome to this episode of Consciousness Motherfucking Empowerment. Here, we talk about consciousness and how to reach your fucking dreams. Now, and these videos, mostly it's about understanding how the universe works, okay? Uh, I want to shout out, shout out to the action takers because essentially... It is twofold that we must use. We must use the mind power and the physical to create, okay? We must use both, okay? Must use both. Now, I want to start off by, by a misunderstanding that a lot of people have with the law of attraction. It's because they think of, they're so absolutist. They just think, oh, so all you got to do is think? So that they just reject it. I know I was one of them. And there's the the ego, the pe a person who does not believe in in a spirit and a, an imagination or like an inner world, a real inner world, right? A person who does not believe in imagination and that thoughts create things non physical or God, which is the ideal, right? So there's that person. And there's a person who only thinks of the spirit and doesn't want to work out, doesn't want to do the work, doesn't want to write the book, doesn't want to do all these other stuff. Okay. You must live for the mind, for the body, and for the spirit. Just like Wallace Waddle says in The Science of Getting Rich. Now, today we're going to talk about uh, the Edinburgh Lectures. <clears throat> the Edinburgh Lectures on Mental Science by Thomas Troward, Chapter 2, The Higher Modes of Intelligence Controls the Lower. Okay, so I'm going to go over what, what he means by the lower and the higher modes of intelligence. Okay, because this is more about definitions, not more about how it, it controls it. It doesn't really say much about how it controls it. Um, I think that was, that's going to be in the next couple of chapters in the, um, uh, what's it called? Causes and conditions, causes and conditions, because then we really, we really are talking about how do we create our results. Uh, but all of these chapters are going to help us in our understanding to create results. This might be that thing that's going to put, put you over to the, the wish fulfilled, you know, to the manifestation of your, your desires. Okay. All right, before we get started, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Number one, are you ready to learn and apply what you learn? Okay, if yes, step forward, met metaphorically speaking. If not, you know, click somewhere else. Number two, are you ready to be the highest version of yourself? Ready to demonstrate, to manifest that highest version of yourself, what you truly desire right here. Recently, somebody had asked me on, um, on Instagram, because I'm on a, I'm on a group. There's, I forget, I forget the names of the people because I, I just listen to what the value that they're saying. That's why I follow. Uh, she said, write prompt, write something that you want to manifest or that you want to create in your life that won't get somebody mad. I'm like, everything that I want to manifest will get somebody mad, you know? So are you going to allow other people's feelings to dictate your life of what you truly want? No, 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 no. Look, when I was in prison and got incarcerated, me going to school and becoming a good person meant that I wasn't going to be out kicking it with my homeboys, right? And I was still young when I got out. I got out when I was 20. So they were still running amok. They were still messing up. That means no more drinking, doing drugs, tagging on walls, doing robberies. Of course, they're gonna get mad. Like, oh, we lost one of the guys. You know, we lost one of our, our, our mem, our members of the crew. So, that happens. That happens. So I'm like, I don't care. I'm not. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to do that type of shit no more. I want to be a good person. I don't want to be in prison. You know, I don't want to be in a dangerous place. I want life. I want to explore. I want freedom. Okay, now I have it. <clears throat> okay, 
So if you're ready to be the highest version of yourself and the best version of yourself, okay, and the one who's linked to the higher power, metaphorically speaking, step forward. If not, get out of my fucking gym. Go somewhere else. All right. So let's get started. The higher modes of intelligence controls the lower. Here, he starts off by <clears throat> explaining how the lower modes of intelligence live on kind of like an automatic method, right? Like fish. He talks about fish and how they produce massive amounts of offspring, but there's a lot of, uh, of um, death, you would say. There's a lot of, I don't want to use the word death, but a lot of them get eaten, you know, there's a lot of room for error. So the, so some do end up living and populating, re repopulating. Now, when you get to a higher level of intelligence, like us humans, we end up lowering those, okay? We end up lowering those numbers of, um, what do you use, what he calls? Law of averages, right? The law of averages, we, live more completely in, with, in, and we do not have, you know, a law of averages type of thing that goes on. You know, most of our, you know, offspring live, even though they may, you know, get hurt or something like that. We don't just let them go. We, we do our best to bring them back. You know, we take them to the hospital. What happens? They get sick. We take them to the hospital. They get cured, what have you, so that that's what changes, okay? It's something that changes, and that's due to individual volition, okay? I'm going to quote him. Quote, we see, therefore, that there is a marked distinction between cosmic intelligence and the individual intelligence. And that factor which differentiates the latter from the former is the presence of individual volition. Okay? Now... The business of mental science is to ascertain the relation of this individual power of volition to the great cosmic law, which provides for the maintenance and advancement of the race. Okay. Everything is advancing. Every, level, every living organism is advancing to higher and higher intelligence. As it evolves, it gets higher and higher intelligence. We can see that from the smallest forms of organisms as they evolve and get... Like, we, we think of the... Um, the bacteria in the ocean, right? When we study um, science in K through 12 in elementary school, we, we know that bacteria evolved into fish and, you know, small organisms, you know, single to multi, multi-celled organisms to like more um, developed. And then they, they were in, they became fish, they got bigger and then they went on to land and they've evolved and changed, etc., etc. Okay. And as we see the higher, the higher the evolution, the higher the intelligence. Okay from automatic to more volition. And we see the volition of these organisms, including ourselves, develop because they demand in their environment, a demand to conquer their environment, okay? It is in the environment response, their organism response. This is something key. It, that our desire has a response within us and outside of us, okay? It's called, uh, Thomas Troward calls this, Thomas Troward calls this atomic intelligence, right? Or uh, atomic responsiveness, I believe. I don't want to say the wrong word. Yeah, where'd it go? He says it towards the end. He just threw it in there. I'm like, whoa, atomic intelligence all of a sudden. Yeah, atomic intelligence. So I'm going to quote this. Quote, the term perhaps, the term may perhaps be open to some objections, but it will serve our present purpose as distinguishing this mode of spirit's intelligence from that of the opposite pole or individual intelligence. This distinction should be carefully noted because it is by the response of the atomic intelligence to the individual intelligence that the thought power is able to produce results on the material plane, as in the cure of disease by mental treatment and the like. 
Okay. So this is very important to understand this because that's where we get our results, that there's an atomic uh, intelligence, okay? There's an atomic responsiveness as well. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to continue on. Intelligence manifests itself by responsiveness. And the whole action of the cosmic mind in bringing the evolutionary process from its first beginnings up to its present human stage is nothing else but a continual intelligent response to the demand which each stage in the progress has made for an adjustment between itself and the environment. That one is deep. That one is kind of tough to understand. Okay, so I'm going to say it again. Intelligence manifests itself by responsiveness. And the whole action of the cosmic mind in bringing the evolutionary process from its first beginnings up to the present human stage is nothing else but a continual intelligent response to the demand which each stage in the progress has made, which each stage in the, in the progress has made for an adjustment between itself and the environment. Okay, so in itself, it has to be intelligence, okay? So intelligence, like I said earlier, intelligence is demanding a change, okay? So it, it's, it's uh, manifesting in a response to the environment. And it's, it's bringing in um, an, an evolu evolutionary process, okay, in each stage. Okay, in each stage, in each stage, it's trying to, life is evolving, it's trying to own or dominate that stage of development. It's trying to go above it. It's trying to dominate it. Like, okay, we've dominated the ocean now. All right, you're a fish. We've dominated the ocean. Let's go on land. Okay, we've dominated the land. Let's go on sea. Does that, doesn't that correlate to motherfucking humans? Okay, we've conquered the land. Okay, let's conquer the sea, right? Or at least we've tried to conquer the sea. Maybe we have, we just don't want to go down there for whatever reason. You go into space, why can't we go down? But that's not my goal. And then, then okay, now let's go into space, right? Let's go into space now. And we've done that. Okay, we've been there. Okay, just a little side thing. I wonder why we, we humans have said that we haven't gone down to the depths of, of, our, of our oceans. And like, it's strange why that is. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Elon Musk should try and conquer that and do that because I know he lo he loves going against, you know, um, beliefs, common beliefs. And this go, I want to go back to um, <clears throat> something that he brought up here. Results, okay. I want to share something right here. This is important for results. And it's about your connection to everything else in the physical. Okay. Quote, the lower degree of self-recognition is that which only realizes itself as an entity separate from all other entities as the ego distinguished from the non-ego. But the higher degree of self-recognition is that which real, realizing its own spiritual nature sees in all other forms, not so much the non-ego or that which is not itself as the alter ego or that which itself or that which is itself in a different mode of expression. Now, it is this higher degree of self-recognition that is the power by which the mental scientist produces results. Look around you. It's a part of your imagination is your thought. Even the people around you are part of your thought and how they respond or react to you is your thought. <clears throat> That's why Neville Goddard also says, everyone is you pushed out. It's your beliefs about what's going on that is creating that for you. Now, I'm going to go into explaining how everyone has a spiritual substance in them, okay? An intelligence in them. And whether they know it or not, 
We are all one. We're all connected. We, are, we all have this intelligence within us, whether it is animate, right? Moving and lively or inanimate just sits there like a rock. Okay. <laughs> you can say, you can even say a tree is inanimate because it looks like it's just not moving, but it's alive. It's alive, man. Everything, everything in the physical universe has living spirit in it. And if you work with living spirit, then you will get what you want because you're wor working in harmony. Thomas Short also shares here that when you work with the power of the laws of electricity from a higher to a lower, you use the electricity for your benefit to produce results. If you don't, if you go from the bottom, contrary, right, the lower to higher energy output, it doesn't work that way. Okay, it doesn't work. So you must know the laws of spirit to create materially what you want to fucking manifest. Okay, when I was in prison, I didn't know I was using that. All I knew that I was saying the Our Father, all right, before I went to sleep, I still do it. When I wake up the next day, I want to say the Our Father, I feel amazing. So I say it. And I've noticed the, the, the differences, okay? Versus just being grateful and then saying the Our Father, recognizing the Spirit, okay? So I, say the, I would say the Our Father, recognizing the Spirit. Number two, I would be grateful for the day, for God protecting me. And three, I would see myself having what I want. I, was, I would be so, oh, so happy seeing myself with, with what I want. And I do that now, or I ask myself now, how do I feel now that I have... X and as I as I say that as I'm verbalizing it, it I'm seeing it. It's kind of like half picture, half like here is the physical and here is the 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 image in my mind. And I close my eyes and I ju I just see the image in my mind. We are always thinking. That's why every time we say something, we are manifesting that. So if you're thinking or feeling something you don't want, switch it. Say next and then start. Saying the things that you want. I am at peace. I am happy. I am present. I am loving. I love you, mama. See, I, I was saying these and they started, she started looking at me. Okay. You say these things. Okay. She heard the word love, so she turned around. What you say here is powerful. It's a manifestation of what you're thinking. So, so it's very, very powerful. You've manifested thought, action, manifestation. It's vibrating. A sound is in the physical. Somebody can't hear you if they're all the way far away. They, they won't hear it, right? But if they have a phone, you can say something, they'll hear it. It's on the physical. Okay, it's on the physical realm. You've manifested it. That's why you have the thing you desire now. You have it now. Knowing this should move calmly and patiently on the physical realm as you move towards your goal while you're taking your actions, okay? And those actions, do not worry what they are. Just do what is in resonance, okay? What resonates, okay? It's obvious when it's something that you do want, like, okay, you want to do YouTube, then you do YouTube videos. It's not that hard, you know? <laughs> not that hard. But... It's our limiting beliefs and our doubts that prevent us from taking the action. It's really easy. Action is just easy. It's just our limiting beliefs. That's why it's important to tell yourself, I have no fear. I love this one. This, this one came to me because I, I was experiencing a lot of things. I'm like, okay, so I know the law. So I was just doing the opposite. I was like, okay, I would say next. And I would say, okay, I'm happy. I'm confident. Okay, what are these feelings? Why is there some fear going on? Okay. My mind tells me, okay, you're changing, you're evolving, you're, you're changing your circumstances. So your old self is, is scared that, you know, something, the unknown, the unknown. Okay, well, I know the laws, bullshit. I'm safe, I look around, I'm safe, and everything's good. <laughs> and so you gotta go through this inner work, okay? Inner work, acknowledge what you're feeling. <sighs> okay, acknowledge what you're feeling, and then let it go. Okay, feel into them. There's different tools we can use that will that that help us from being stuck, okay? Being stuck, hindering our own self. Meditation helps too. Taking deep breaths.
and then being present. And then you're calm and relaxed and just do the work. Or affirming it. Affirming it has also power, has vibratory power in it. I am at peace. I am present. I am safe. I am full of love. I am full of energy. I am fearless. There is nothing to fear but the feeling of fear itself. I know, I know there's a quote out there, but I like that one because it reminds me, like, okay, so I'm not going to feel it. I'm going to be happy. I'm, I choose joy. And now you move on to the action that you got to fucking take. And now, lastly, I'm going to end with this part. Ultimately, we can only conceive of it as an inherent. Ultimately, we can only conceive of it as inherent in some primordial substance, which is the root of all grosser modes of matter, which are known to us, whether visible to the physical eye or necessarily inferred by science from, the from their perceptible effects. Okay. So here he's talking about a marvelous intelligence underlying everything. And where can we find this intelligence? And that's the word of the quote. We can only conceive of it as an inherent, as inherent in some primordial substance, which is the root of all grosser modes of matter, which are known to us, whether visible to the physical eye or necessarily inferred by science from their perceptible effects. It is that power which in every species and in every individual becomes that which that species, species or individual is. And thus, we can only conceive of it as a self-forming intelligence inherent in the ultimate substance of which each thing is, per, is a particular manifestation. Now, here's the important one. That this primordial substance must be considered as self-forming by an inherent intelligence abiding in itself becomes evident from the fact that intelligence is the essential quality of spirit. Spirit is intelligence. Every living thing has a level of intelligence. Call that living spirit or livingness. If you want to take the spirit out, call it livingness. And it's self-forming. From the beginning of that nebula, he says a nebula, you know, the non-physical, where everything was created in the physical, the stars, the planets, and then the planets and the organisms, the organisms to higher, higher levels of intelligence. One of which we are. When you go back to that in reverse, where there's non-physical, right? The nebula. We find that it, there is only spirit, intelligence. And intelligence is not physical. It doesn't need something, okay, for it to exist. Our consciousness does not need something physical for it to exist. Our consciousness, it's somewhere in the non-physical. Not in time and space, but e but is in everything. So this one, this chapter is explaining how that is, how spirit is in everything and spirit is in intelligence. And that spirit, if you want to use, if you want to get results, you must use that spirit. Okay, the laws of the spirit to create 
in the physical because the higher modes, right, intelligence, dominate. Spirit dominates the physical. That's why in the Bible it says you, man, or mind, has control over the animals and the land. I don't know the exact quote. If you do know the quote, please do it. Please write it below. Okay, I want to show this last quote and I'm going to end it because we're getting past where, the time that I like. <sighs> however, however far back, therefore, we may re relegate the original starting point. We cannot avoid the conclusion that at that point, spirit contains the primary substance in itself. Which brings us back to the common statement that it made everything out of nothing. We thus find two factors in the making of all things. Spirit and nothing. And the addition of nothing to spirit leaves only spirit. Like I had just mentioned right now. Spirit, intelligence, doesn't need anything to create something. Okay? Okay. It is the power to create physically, okay? Intelligence, spirit. Intelligence and spirit, and spirit are one. And the highest level of spirit is a self-volition spirit, okay? The one that can create on its own. It's just that the lower levels of intelligence um, kind of think automatically. They do have some kind of... Some some responsiveness, some thinking, some intelligence. Now, these are my thoughts. It's, it's amazing how we have come full circle, right? We've evolved and then come to consciousness. The same consciousness that created everything is the same consciousness that we have in our mind. Okay. How do we know that? By our inventions. Okay, by our inventions. I'm looking at an iPhone right now. It's not in nature. We thought about it. We created it. That's how we're evolving to higher and higher levels because we understand this. Okay, we understand this. And we must use the laws of the spirit and the laws of nature congruently, right? Congruently so that we manifest our dreams. I didn't know this when I was incarcerated. I didn't know I was using the laws of the of the spirit and the mind. Okay. And then my actions, my actions, are, of course, duh, the actions. We take the actions. That was obvious. Okay. Like I started it in the beginning. We must use all of it. Okay. We must use all of it. We must use the spirit, God, or you know, the primordial intelligence, <laughs> however you want to call it. Uh, whatever resonates for you. We must use God. We must use our mind to create and so that God responds and to create that. And lastly, our body as we move, we move calmly, okay? We move joyfully, okay? We put in 100% effort in what we are doing. The best effort, the best that we can do. 100% effort, okay? I love you. I hope you like this one. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If somebody resonated with you, share it with them, okay? Share this video with them, and I love you, okay? Till next time, peace.